One of the questions we hear most often in our classes, our workshops, and one-on-ones is how can I sell over video conferencing more effectively? How can I use Zoom to sell like a pro? We've got you covered. 10 tips to help you sell like a pro. But before we do, why does this even matter? So I'm gonna share some stats and these numbers, they're gonna blow your mind. First off, we all know that COVID saw a massive increase in the amount of video conferencing and video on the internet. And no, it wasn't just people chilling at home watching Netflix. It was for business purposes, for work purposes. We know that from the folks over at Trust Radius, they can tell us that there was over 500% increase in the amount of business transactions for video software. Not only that, but if we take a look at specific companies, we could take a look at what uh, Bloomberg lets us know. Companies like Zoom saw almost a 3,000% increase in the number of daily active users over a four month period. Now that's huge, but is this really a good thing? Are we gonna go back to how they were or is this the new normal? Well, 87% of respondents, remote workers say they feel more connected to their teams and to their employers because of video conferencing. So no, this is the new normal. We need to be selling online using video. But what does that mean for you as a sales rep? It can be daunting, it can be intimidating. And the first few times you're running a demo, you're running a presentation remotely, those fumbles can be embarrassing and harm your closing rates. So here we go, 10 tips to make you more effective and more confident in selling over Zoom. Tip number one, the mute button. Use it like lives depend on it. Not only is it going to improve the experience for everyone else, but it'll save you those embarrassing moments if someone walks in, the phone rings, an alert pops, use it and it will make you more professional. Moreover, you don't need to worry about forgetting about it. We've all been in those meetings where people start talking and everyone reminds them, oh, you're on mute. Save yourself that embarrassment by using this trick, the space bar. While you're in a Zoom meeting, you can hold the space bar to talk and it'll temporarily unmute you. So not only can you save everybody else on the line, but you can imagine you're using an old walkie talkie while you're at it. Tip number two, the camera angle. Take the time to get the camera angle at eye level so it's looking at you like a person would. If you're speaking to somebody, you wouldn't have them looking up your nose or looking down at you from above. So get it straight at and it'll feel like a more human and a more effective experience. And number three, audio. Pay attention to it. People forgive laggy, choppy video, low resolution, choppy graphics, but if the audio is bad, that will end the call like nothing else. Try to avoid using the built-in audio because it often comes across as really tinny. Take the time to add a headset, a very inexpensive set of cabled headset and over the head, all of those will improve the quality of your audio. And if you're in a space where you can't avoid background noises, there are inexpensive tools like crisp.ai. There's a link in the description that can actually automatically remove that background noise. Pay attention to the audio and that'll immediately level up the quality of your calls. Tip number four, be deliberate in what you're sharing. Often when you share your screen, the first option is your whole screen, but that includes everything like your taskbar, your menu bar, your alerts, your messy desktop. If you're sharing for a demo or to share information, share just the application, or just the tab in your browser to make sure people are seeing an uncluttered view and you have no embarrassing moments while you share something you didn't intend to. The last thing you wanna do is accidentally share a sensitive customer email while you're sitting in a video conference with others. So take the time to be careful of your share. As well, keep in mind, people will be using different devices. They might be on their phone, an iPad, their computer. If you take the time to share a window that's sized appropriately, people will be able to see the right information. If you're sharing your whole screen and you have a massive monitor, that's gonna be really hard for people who are joining from smaller devices. Sharing your screen like a pro is gonna make you look really good. Tip number five, consider your background and your surroundings. No, you don't have to have an incredible studio with a green screen. That means to take time and be deliberate. Zoom, Teams, all of them have virtual backgrounds so you could put what you want behind you. That might be your branding, it might be a photo, one of your favorite locations. Or if you're using your own space, think about how it'll come across. For example, my background gives me an amazing opportunity to speak about my travel, my family. I can't count the number of times people have asked me about the painting I have behind me or the Lego figurines. Think about your surroundings as a way to show off your personality, to put yourself forward in the best light, and consider how people will be seeing it because that's the most important.
By the way, if you're enjoying this video so far, I'd ask you to take a moment to smash that like and subscribe button, and that gives us a fighting chance of becoming a YouTube sensation. We're a small account and we can't get to that level without your help. And of course, beyond this video, if you do subscribe, you'll get notified of what's coming up and you can also look back into our catalog. We have a whole library of tips and tricks like this, as well as recordings of our workshops, webinars, demo days. There's a ton of great content there and we hope you enjoy it. And of course, if you have any other Zoom tips that I don't touch in this video, please toss them in the comments below. These are fantastic, useful tips for all the professionals that we share this video with. So thanks, click those buttons and stay tuned for the next five tips. Tip number six, use your keyboard shortcuts. In the description, we link to one of our articles where we go through a number of the most popular ones, but even knowing a couple, like how to quickly stop sharing your screen. We've all been in a situation where we've got three or four Zoom windows open, the chat, the participants, the screen share, and you notice that something pops up, you need to quickly get back to it. Being able to quickly use those keyboard shortcuts to shop sharing, to turn off your video, those are great escape hatch moments so you don't have to worry about clicking around to find those links. Number seven, use that pause button. This is often overlooked. When you're sharing your screen, that stop sharing button, right beside it has a pause sharing. When you click that button, whatever you had on your screen is frozen, available for everybody, while you can go and move on to other things. This is fantastic if you need to look something up, if you need to get a piece of information. You don't need to let everyone see you hunting around in your emails or your folders. Just pause the screen while you look for it. When you come back and unpause it, they'll catch up with where you are. Great way to hide the messiness of what you're working on while you put your best foot forward to your audience. Tip number eight, review your security settings. Take the time to be deliberate about which security settings are used for which meetings. For example, one-click login, that's best for internal meetings that are happening on a recurring basis. Your weekly kickoffs, closeouts, all hand meetings, it makes it very easy for your team to click the link and get in. Zoom can be set up to whitelist email domains. So if you have people who are joining your Zoom regularly, you can add them to the whitelist so that they don't need to sit in the waiting room or enter a passcode. Which brings me to the other two settings, the waiting room, be sure to enable that. And that way you can make sure that as you're letting people in, you know who they are and you're avoiding any of that Zoom bombing. The third option, the passcode is really best when you need that extra layer of security. You could share that password like kickoff ahead of events so that people who are coming in aren't just who you think they are, but they know what you've shared in advance. Tip number nine, be sure to add the Zoom details into your calendar invitations. The easiest way to do that is to use the meeting link and put that in as the location in your calendar. If you're using the Zoom Chrome extension and you're using webmail, it'll actually do that for you automatically. When you create a meeting and you click make it a Zoom meeting, it'll put it right there in that location. That way, anytime somebody opens up the event, they've got the link right there and you can go even further by customizing the body. Instead of just using that plain wall of text that Zoom and any conference app gives you, put in a short agenda for the meeting right at the top. And that way, anytime someone's opening the event or at the start of the event, you and they can refer to it. Tip number 10, configure your personal meeting ID. Zoom can set you up with an individual meeting room that's always available, so you can just stand it up. Now it's a randomly generated nine to 11 digit code by default, but you can change that. Clever hack, set it to your phone number. So if you're ever in those situations where you need to quickly stand up a room, you could tell people, load up Zoom, here's the meeting number, and just rhyme off your phone number. You never need to worry about forgetting it. Now bonus tip number 11, choose when to disable your personal meeting ID. You can see here in these options, I've turned it off so that I'm not using my personal meeting ID when I schedule meetings. The reason for that is when I book meetings for customers, partners, students, anyone, especially when they're booked back to back, every meeting gets a unique code. So you'll never have a situation where someone crashes one of your meetings early because you use the same code for multiple sessions. So yes, your personal ID can be a lifesaver, but be sure not to use it when you're scheduling meetings. Thanks again for watching. I hope these tips were helpful for you. If you have any other suggestions, tips we might have overlooked, please toss them in the comments below. Like and subscribe, that's always a huge help. And of course, please join us at our demo day events. There's a link on where you can register to join us in the description. And if you're ever curious about the training we provide, you can let us know in the comments or hop on over to uvaro.com. We'll catch you in our next update. I hope you have a fantastic day and happy selling.